Hey, what's up, guys? Hello. Picture this. First date. You and your crush, sitting there, finished an amazing meal. The bill comes. What happens? Both of you guys just sit there, blank stares, and you guys are like, aw, shit. What is gonna happen now? Is she gonna try to reach for her purse and try to pay for this? Is, is he gonna reach for his wallet and just like block me from paying and then throw his credit card down? Who's gonna pay the bill first and who's responsible for paying the, for paying the bill first? Or is it gonna be like Asian parents and they fight each other all the way until the cash register? I don't know if that should happen on a first date. That's, that's already true. that's already a red flag and not you shouldn't be in a relationship. I always love watching that though at a like an Asian restaurant where yeah, they're, it's pretty they're always fighting like they're literally fighting all the way until the cash register. Dude, some of that stuff gets serious because then one guy's going like no 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 and then they start threatening the waitress or the waiter and then the waiter's like oh, uh, even the waiter's shit. like ah oh, <laughs> ah I talk. I don't know. Yeah, that's pretty funny. But if you asked me this question last year, I would say 100%, hands down, it should be a 50-50 transaction. And I'm all about like equality and it doesn't matter who asked who. It just shows that, you know what, both of us are in this together. We want like a, a mutual relationship where, where I can take care of you, you can take care of me. And it, it, to me, it just sounds fair. But what changed? Now, what changed is the older that I'm becoming, the more I want to have a family of my own and the more I want to be taken care of in that regard. I want to make sure that my spouse, my significant other is going to be capable of taking care of me and our future offspring um, when I'm nurturing and taking care and, and, and um, helping our kids and our offspring grow. Because I don't want to have to be taken care of two things. I feel like for the women that do that out there, that's amazing and I... I think you are like a superwoman, but that for me is not a route that I want to take. I grew up with a mom that had a job, like a full-time job. She raised us, she took us to extracurricular activities. She was just like all over the place. She basically sacrificed her life for us. And she, because she was working so much to give us such an amazing future, that um, I didn't have my mom around growing up. I not, completely agree because to, my parents were divorced too. Well, mom, not the two, but my parents were divorced, and my mom raised me on her own. She worked, helped me with homework, and made food. That's amazing, and and I think women like that literally are super women. But because I experienced that, I don't want that for my kids because I didn't have a mom around. Yeah, she was there. She's super responsible, and I'm not trying to give you guys a sob story because I don't feel like it affected me in any sort of way. But I know that. Uh, one time my mom had to stay because she had some sort of surgery that she was forced to stay at home That when I would come home from school or from whatever I was doing that day She was there she was more involved in my life and we would have conversations and we got a lot closer and that feeling Really resonated with me and it was something that I wanted to replicate with my future kids so because of that um, I don't want to be responsible or have not that it's a burden but just have that on my back that I need to not only take care of my kids, take care of my husband, and and my husband. <laughs> Shut up! But also have to worry about like earning an income for the entire family. And you know what the weird thing is? I had a very similar upbringing where my mom was divorced and she. Uh, my parents aren't not divorced, divorced but my, the, uh, <laughs> the upbringing that my mom had to work and take care of me. But when my mom was sick one time and she had to stay home, I was like, "Fuck! I gotta stay with this bitch all day." <laughs> Yeah, your mom's a different type but, of breed But though. though, I do completely agree that the type of warmth that I had in my house was completely different from my friends whose mom would stay at home and we would go to his house or whatever and there'd be snacks on the table, the, the mom was ready home -cooked to- Home-cooked meals. Yeah, home-cooked meal, the, the mom was ready to take us to go to the park, to go anywhere we wanted and I was like, yeah. man, this, this feels like like the sitcom lifestyle, you know, my, at my home it's just cold, it's just me, four walls, a TV, and I'm like, man, this, this sucks. Yeah. But you feel like though, by the guy paying on the first date, how does that signify that this is the ideal husband or a husband candidate that can take care of you in the way you want? Well, now because my mentality changed, so let me just backtrack a little bit. So back in the day, I didn't even want to get married. I didn't want a family. I was Until so- Until you met me, of course, but keep going, yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'll just let that one slide because we don't have that much time. Anyway, so I could care less about getting married, a family. I was so career driven that all I wanted to do was just have a comfortable life, be able to take care of my immediate family, which was my mom, my dad, my sisters, my brothers, whatever, hook them up with amazing houses, have an amazing house of my own, travel the world, and just be completely free-spirited without like any other responsibility other than myself 
and maybe if I was about to start dating someone. That's, that was my mindset, right? So when I would go out on a date or when I would hang out with, with a guy or whatever, I was always like, hey, you know what? I'm an independent woman. I'm going to show you that we are on equal playing fields here. You pay for something, I'll pay for something. Sometimes I'll pay for the whole thing just so that you know that I got you and you got me. So that's just kind of how I like I that. I, that's not, that seems like a very independent, powerful woman when a woman could be like, you know, I got you, man. Psh, come on, dude. Yeah, and I never thought less of the dude. I was never like, I own this bitch. I never felt like this dude's a pussy or whatever, right? I was just like, hey, I know what society, what pressure society puts on you. Let me show you that you don't have to feel that with me because I know you got it and I got it too. So. Have you ever opened a door for a guy though? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, keep going. Well, anyway, so that's just where my mind was for I want to say about 80% of my life. But recently because I'm older now and I want to start a family and I want to get married and all this stuff, right? Now I'm thinking more like... Are you trying to imply something? No, not at all. Okay. So now I'm thinking like, hey, you know what? Like, I, I do want to see if my significant other can take care of me. And when it comes to a first date, I think that's the first way and the simplest way to see if, that, if they're even capable of like doing that for you. And the way that I can figure that out is, if I'm on a first date, I want to make sure that a guy knows how to treat me right. That he's going to open a door for me. That he's going to, that my feelings are in, in his, like in the forefront of his mind. And that's like his priority to make sure that I'm taken care of, that I'm happy. That his princess is, is never going to feel any sort of discomfort. So what you're saying is that by the guy paying that gesture, you feel like that that is the guy keeping your needs in mind and that can translate to a whole slew of other behaviors and conduct of how a guy is going to keep you in his mind and, and always attend to your needs like oh you know what I, I realized that I saw her socks being low in the sock drawer I'm gonna <laughs> buy her more socks like like is that what you're well, talking about? Well kind of that's a little bit more extreme and I know that on a first date everyone is like on their best behavior just because they're trying to impress one another. So I'm not saying that I put so much weight on the first date to say like, oh, what the hell? Like he didn't pull out a chair for me. What a fucking animal. Like I'm not taking it to that extreme either, but I'm looking for a lot of clues and a lot of key points in his behavior so that I can, I'm basically evaluating him so that I can see like, okay, do I want, like does he, does he even have it in his head or is he completely oblivious to, to this stuff? So if he can pass, if he can pass like, all the, the hair, the hair pulling, oh my god, what am I The about? hair pulling. <laughs> the chair pulling. Uh, you see, that's not gonna happen. Yeah. The chair pulling, the opening the door to making sure that like, if he sees my glasses half empty, that he's like, oh my god, let me take care of her. Hey, waiter, waitress, can you like hook her up with some water or whatever? Like, I'm looking for these little things. And then I'm gonna feel like, hey, you know what? Like, he's very observant. He has his eyes open. Like, he, he has me like in the... Like I said, forefront of his mind, he's taking care of my needs. He makes sure that he's making sure that I feel good. And then that is gonna lead me to want to date him.